Now, the secret to a lot of composting, you know, it's, I suppose it's like blending a nice wine or, or making a cake. It's all about the ingredients and how the ingredients act together. And I'll just give you a few yeses and noes to composting. Um, certainly one of the noes. No! Do not be putting it. I don't often put citrus in. I don't often add citrus into, into it. Don't use anything like nappies. That's a no. Um, and of course, plastic is a definite, definite no. And um, the other things, of course, is anything that, uh, that's meat or dairy. Do not put in a compost bin. Not because it doesn't break down. Of course it does. But it may attract rodents in and you, you don't want uh, mice or rats around. So by just choosing things like bananas and uh, potato peelings or any other vegetables that are finished within the house, I normally have a little separate bin in the side of the, uh, 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 the back door which I put in just bits and pieces like that. So you're collecting anything that, that, that works with, uh, with composting as vegetable material. Now, of course, eggs are another. Eggshells work well. It's a good source of uh, calcium, of course. It's not only the egg, it's also the carton as well. Cardboard is pretty good to put into, um, into your composter. Uh, oh, no, the other thing, don't put walnuts in. Uh, walnuts, once they break down, also contain some materials that are, are not particularly liked by some plants, tomatoes and the like. But of course you're also putting in garden waste as well and it could be anything from, from leaves and grass cuttings and the like. And the, the secret really, as I said earlier on, is about making a blend really, it's a mix. And there are really two types of materials that go into composters. One, which is nitrogen or green waste. So that's all your grass clippings uh, uh, and that's uh, a lot of your kitchen waste is classed as green. It produces a lot of nitrogen and nitrogen is really good for obviously accelerating and supporting plant leaf growth. Now you need to balance that up by putting carbon into, the, uh, into your composter. And carbon could be a variety of different things. It could be cardboard, newspapers, you know, rip up a, 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 a bit of cardboard like this and you put pieces of cardboard in. Um, you can also put things like straw uh, or, or dried twigs and branches and, and usually it's, it's more carbon than greenery. So you don't just get a massive dump of grass cuttings. Mix them in with some branches and leaves and cardboard and the like. You know, anything up to uh, three parts um, uh, uh, carbon or the cardboard and the, uh, and the, and the uh, dried leaves and twigs to the other part being wet, which is leaves and, and grass clippings and, and obviously peelings and the like. And that type of balance goes a long way in making really good compost. Now, the first thing you need to decide if you're going to compost, you know what to compost, is positioning your compost bin. Now, the secret of it is, and it's like a lot of things, we don't like things too dry and we don't like things too wet. Uh, and that's exactly what composting is. So I move a compost bin into a sheltered position that's not uh, exposed, because one of the things with the gales that we've had, anything that's exposed, uh, it gets blown over and then lids get blown off. So position it into a sheltered uh, area of your garden. It's always best if it's situated straight onto the ground. I mean, a lot of people uh, and composters, uh, or, or some people put them onto uh, slabs, or, or decking or, or put a plastic sheet down don't do that let the compost make contact straight with the ground what you want is the local worm community to lend a hand get in there composting themselves those little worms they absolutely love it but it's not just breaking down the material of course it's adding air waves within the compost as well so if there's more air and there's more moisture it creates the right conditions for the bacteria and other microorganisms you can actually buy composting worms to get worms in the post. Can you believe it? Um, but I love worms. I mean, some people will be going, Ugh. Look at these. You know, where would the planet... <laughs> Everybody, don't, do you like the worms? Look at them. And they need to warm up a bit. These little dendrons here. You can buy them in the post, composting worms. There's a lovely company called, a great name for a worm company. Wiggly Wigglers and they sell composting worms that you can add in. More worms in the soil, of course they do a fantastic job in aerating, in breaking down material underneath. Uh, they're the real workforce along with microorganisms within the soil. So worms are really great. Choosing uh, a compost bin 
couldn't be easier. You can make your own or buy them pre-made because a composter is effectively a container that's holding uh, a lot of material that through the process of composting with the help of uh, bacteria and fungus and other microorganisms it's breaking that down and creating uh, a, a, a fine uh, um, organic material that you can dig into your gardens on that basis and working that into the soil is helping because it, it's creating uh, obviously more pockets of shelter for microorganisms it's allowing a little bit more air in there there's food as well so by adding in organic matter it really works.